Earlier this year I went to Papua New Guinea to have a look at coffee and tea, but I never saw them pick the coffee. Can you tell me how they do that? Mm, it's a pity you didn't see it because it's a great process. On some of the larger plantations around the world where the areas are nice and flat and they've got nice beautiful straight rows, they use mechanical harvesting and the big machines will suck all the coffee cherries off the tree. But the lion's share of all coffee that comes um, from the producing countries is all picked by hand. And that can be quite difficult because at any one time you can get a beautiful white uh, blossom, a really rich red cherry and a green berry. And it's very important for the harvester to pick the red cherry because the green berry will change colour and the blossom will turn into a, a berry itself. So it's quite labour intensive. So in Papua New Guinea they use the wet or washed method. There are two methods though, isn't there, to process the coffee? Um, there are a few methods, but we'll talk about the two main ones. One is the, the wet method, and I think you would have seen that in New Guinea. The other is the dry method. And just generally speaking, the dry method is where they leave the cherry on the tree. So it goes from that beautiful red colour, and it starts to get quite purple in colour, and it starts to shrivel up. That's when they pick it. A lot of the intense flavours that have come out of the pulp that surrounds the, the beans will actually go into the coffee and the general tastes are a little bit different to the wet process that you saw. Wet process tends to be a, a, a cleaner, cleaner cup and quite a bit more acidity. I noticed when we flew from Goroka to Mount Hagen, looking out the windows, we saw lots and lots of strips of blue. And what are they doing there? Well, you talked about the wet process and what's happening with the cherry. The cherry goes through a, a long channel of water and a lot of the uh, skin and mucilage is actually taken away from the, the berries. Then it's wet. And what they need to do is they actually need to dry it. And what they do is they put it out on these big long, long tarpaulins and they use the natural sun to dry the coffee for them. And then they get left with a very dried parchment. And I'm going to show you some here. So this is a coffee bean and it's got a dried parchment around it. So what I'll do, and you might some you might have seen this happen in New Guinea, they take the dried parchment and they actually break it. And you can hear that crunching. What I'm doing is that I'm taking the outer skin off. And if we have a look at that now, there are a few coffee beans there for us. This is what I would probably call a manual huller. And there are machines that do that in New Guinea. So let's pick one out. There we have one coffee bean. You might notice that the coffee bean has got a slightly silver skin around it. That's called a silver skin. And what we need to do is we need to polish that and take it off. And that'll happen in the polishing process. The last stage, and I know what you're going to ask me, the last stage is grading. And what happens there is that the coffee, just like you'd see on, a, on a, um, an apple orchard, the big apples and the smaller apples are all on the table and the tables are shaking, same thing with coffee. The shaking table, the bigger beans will be forced to the top and the smaller beans will be forced to the bottom and they're taken aside and they're graded. So is that it? Well it is really, but what will happen is that the big fat juicy coffee beans that we call A grade, which are the ones that we buy, they will go into a sack, they will be labelled Sigri New Guinea coffee, and the coffees that are a little bit smaller will go into different sacks. Then it's up to the buyer to decide which grade of coffee he wants, and we'll be buying some of the larger coffees for our coffee blends. Then the coffee beans are put into a container, and they're shipped off to the roasting companies around the world. Anton from Carpenters who have Segri and Bunongwu plantations took us to a nursery and we could see the, the little seedlings that were getting close to the 40 centimetres that they plant them out into the fields. Um, also in the nursery they have propagated some shade trees which um, encourage growth of coffee because they don't like to be in direct sunlight. The um, coffee 
seedling can take three to four years to get to a producing size and then they harvest them for 30 to 50 years. Coffee in a tropical climate like Papua New Guinea is where it has frequent rainfall, um, has more than one harvest a year. It is a coffee tree because it can get to up to 10 metres in height if not pruned, but it is pruned for ease of harvest so it kind of looks like a bush but it, you could go both ways. Um, it can be grown at high altitude and low altitude. Arabica, which is 80% of the world's production, um, prefers higher altitudes and Robusta, which is 20%, prefers lower altitudes. Coffee trees grow well in uh, tropical climates, so frequent rainfall, good sunshine hours, high temperatures. Um, they do, as I said, like shade, so they do like a variation in direct sun to shaded sun. In Papua New Guinea, they use the wet process to process their cherry to bean. This means the cherry is picked and it's taken to a processing station. It is pulped, which means the cherry skin has ruptured and this then allows water to enter the uh, mucilage or the cherry flesh around the coffee bean. It, is, it sits in water and the flesh or the mucilage sloths, starts to sloth off over a period of hours or days depending on how long they're leaving it for. This is um, agitated and water is drained and added and drained and added to give the coffee f a very clean flavour in the wet processing method. After the final rinse, the coffee is then moved to the blue um, sails, which it is then laid out and dried and turned regularly to ensure even drying. These sails are closed up at night to make sure that no um, atmospheric moisture impacts on the drying process but they are normally dried like this in the sun for uh, several days. Um, there, is, there is the facility to mechanical dry um, but it is preferred to do all the drying and using the sun. Drum drying is used when the coffee, particularly the fair trade coffee, is brought into the factories and the moisture levels of the bean might not be uniform from drying them on the tarpaulin, the blue tarpaulin. So they're put into drums which is heated by using the husks of the coffee, so it's a um, great recycle reuse process. The temperatures are very hot, I don't know exactly what the temperature is, but they stay in there for about half an hour and drop. they are dropped out when they're about 12% moisture, which is optimum for um, export. Checking each harvest for defects in the beans is very important. Often uh, the ladies do this job. It's quite skilled. They um, go through every sack and pick out the defects. So the product we get here in New Zealand is top notch. Uh, very um, coveted job. Ladies wait at the gate just in case someone calls in sick. It, um, it can be done by a machine. Um, a colour sorter and a density moisture reader, but Coffee Connections, which is our fair trade supplier in Papua New Guinea, choose to use the ladies because it provides employment and they believe that that is more important than the productivity or the gain in um, turnover of the beans, so we really appreciate that. Papua New Guinea was a great country to go and visit on the whole fair trade ethical sourcing um, seen because you've got Coffee Connections who is fair trade certified and then we went to Sigri and Bunamu who are not and they do things because they want to so they have aid stations and schools and health checks and ensure all of their workers um, have what they need to get by so there was the flip side of a, a large company 
doing what's right and also a small company being fair trade certified. So I think it is important to go to Origin to visit your suppliers to ensure that they're doing things that you agree with. And if they don't, then you can find other places to get your produce. Hulling is part of the process where you're taking the parchment or the skin around the coffee bean off the coffee bean. This is part of the processing part. Underneath the parchment there is the silver skin which gets polished off and then you've got the green coffee bean. This is done in, a, in small samples to check the quality of the um, harvest that you've got. It's also done in a massive um, scale as well. All of the beans are um, hulled because that removes the parchment and then they are polished and then they are graded and then they are packed, sacked and shipped. Coffee is graded to assure uniformity in the bean size that you purchase. If you purchase an A or an AA you would assume that your bean would be bigger than a B a C or an X. The grading is used uses vibration and airflow, so a bit of gravity in there. The beans, uh, the big beans, are um, pushed to the top, and the little beans flow to the bottom. And this um, is how they grade. looked to me like they all swapped around jobs so that there wasn't any one person standing next to the noisy machine for any length of time. The, um, the dust was quite high because the beans are quite dusty. So the coffee bean is graded and then it is stored in grade specific containers. It's then put into a branded bag. The bag is filled and stitched with a sewing machine like device. It's then put on a pallet. The boys that do that um, have some pretty fancy moves. The um, pallet is stacked, stored and then it is shipped generally by sea to us and other countries around the world. I loved my experience in Papua New Guinea. The people were very friendly, very smiley. They wanted to show you what they were doing. I enjoyed every uh, aspect of it, walking around the markets and seeing what they had on offer and wanted you to try it. They are a subsistence-based agricultural community, which means they grow most of their produce that they eat in their back garden. This is very important for the coffee industry because most of the villagers will have a coffee plant or two. They'll take it to the market and sell their coffee and it will go into big lots. Um, seven million people in Papua New Guinea, they're amazing people, very friendly. They love getting their picture taken and the joys of digital photography, you can show them what they look like as well. Coffee is not their primary source of income. They also have some um, very deep mineral deposits. They grow tea and cocoa and palm oil. They're very rich in their culture. They love their um, tribal song and dance and very similar to the Māori culture as far as their myths and legends are passed down in song and dance. They love each other, very village orientated, very family orientated and really keen to invite people over there and, and to experience their culture and their way of life.